Okay, so in the previous video, what we discussed was that we could set up this random variable x, y, this joint random variable, uh, which is mapping every outcome onto a point within the pl R2 plane. And specifically, it maps you into a point within this triangle here. Uh, so below the pink line and within these two green, uh, green lines as well. Okay, right. Now what we want to do... This is the problem, by the way. Um, what we want to be able to find is we want to be able to find the... What we wanted to be able to find was the expected value of the second breakpoint. So what we actually want is... Uh, this is what we're actually trying to get. We want the expected value of the random variable y. Now, um, if we... There are uh, loads of ways of attacking this, but we are going to attack it using the law of total expectation. And basically, uh, I want to discuss how you can find this expected value of y through looking at this joint random variable x, y here. Because this joint random variable is more than just some joint random variable. It's a beautiful joint random variable. It's a bijection. Every outcome in here has a corresponding point in here. So, how could we find the expected value of y? Well, what we could do is if we knew the joint probability density function. So if we knew the joint probability density function of our joint random variable x and y as a function of little x, little y. And remember what that means. That would mean if you've got a little point, and I don't know where to draw this, I'll draw it um, down here. So if you've got, let me just draw this triangle back in. So let's have our edge of our triangle there. Here's that edge of the triangle. So this is our triangle here. So this is 1 here, this is 0 here. This is also one up here. All right, so if you took any point, little x, little y, what the joint probability density function means is if you take a little square, delta x, um, a little square uh, around that, uh, well, near that point. So if I blow this up, if we've got this little square here, this point over here is little x, little y. This is the point little x plus, um, oh no, no, not little x plus, little x y plus delta y, and this is down here is the point little x plus delta x y, and then obviously this final point here is the point little x plus delta x and little y plus delta y. Okay, so if you take a little square like that and you want to know what's the probability that you're within that square, basically it's going to be the probability density function, what's going to approximately be the probability density function evaluated at that point x, y, times the area of the square, which is just the side lengths, delta x times delta y. So this is delta x, this is delta y. Okay, right. Uh, and that's what this really means. It doesn't tell you what the probability of a point is, because that's zero. The probability of the point x, y is zero. Uh, so getting the, probabili the probability of a specific outcome in this stick-breaking problem is zero. Instead, what it says is, what is the density of probability around that point to x, to y? And therefore, if we take a tiny little... Um, little um, area, this little square here, if we want to work out the probability of that, we can um, you approximate, approximately say that uh, the probability density isn't going to change within that little square. So we can just take the probability density at little x, little y, and times it by delta x, delta y. Okay, uh, so that's what the probability density function means. And it, if we want to work it, work the probability that you're within that little square out properly, what we'd do is we'd, um, we'd um, integrate the probability density function over that little square, because then what you're saying is um, basically sum the probabilities up for tiny, infinitesimal uh, little squares, and sum it all the infinitesimal squares that make up this finite square up, and then it, that will add up to the overall probability, basically. Okay, um, but um, how could we work out this expected value of y using this? Um, well, we don't actually know the probability density function of x and y, because the reason is, it is not just... Um, it's not basically just, we, well, we don't know the probability density function of y either, but these two are not independent, so it's not just those two multiplied together. 
Okay, but anyway, how could we you if we did know the probability density function, how could we use it to calculate this expected value of y? Well, what we could do is we could say, okay, what is the expected value of y just by definition? Um, well, it means basically uh, try to sum up. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated because, as I say, you'll need to replace the sum with an integral because it's going to be an uncountable, the infinite sum. But just for intuition, I'll keep it there anyway. Sum up all values of y and then take that value of y and times it by the probability that big Y is equal to that little y. Okay, so basically what we could do is we could go through this triangle we could go to every tiny little infinitesimal square. We could take the probability that you're within that infinitesimal square and then times it by the value of y. And if we integrated that all up, would that find us the expected value of y? Well, I claim it would. So my claim, and I'm going to try and give you at least some intuition as to why this is true, is that if we were to perform the double integral over this triangle, so I'll denote the triangle by orange, so over this orange triangle here, over orange triangle, if we were to take the double integral over the orange triangle of this probability density function of x and y, evaluated at little x, little y, where we if we go to every little x, little y in the orange triangle, we times it by this infinitesimal area of, um, of our tiny little box, because if we do infinitesimal little boxes, then this truly does become the probability that within that little box. That's not rigorous, and that's not analytical, uh, the analytically rigorous statement of this, but it's a good intuition to have. And then what we need to do, if that gives us the probability that within this infinitesimal little box, so I'm imagining now that the side lengths of this box are infinitesimal, that gives us the probability that within that little box, all we then need to do is times that by the y value corresponding to that little box. And the y value is just little y. Now if we integrate that up for every little x and little y, in this probability space, then we go over every possible outcome, because remember, what we want to really do is to take the expected value of y, and this is probably what I should have written. I should have written, we want to sum over every possible outcome the y value of that outcome times the probability of that outcome. Because that's really, that's foundationally what the expected value of y is. It basically says, go through every single outcome here, look at the y value of that outcome, and then just average it all up average all the y values. So basically what we're doing is we're saying uh, look at, go through every single outcome, take its y value and times it by the probability of that outcome. Okay, and I claim that this is doing that because I'm saying go through every little x and y in this orange triangle, which is every outcome, because I've told you about how this joint random variable is effectively a bijection. Uh, so every outcome in here, every little s, has a corresponding little x, little y in this orange triangle. So I'm saying go through every little x, little y in this orange triangle. Take the probability of that little x, little y, which is the probability density function, times by this infinitesimal little area around that point. So that's the probability of that outcome, and then times it by the y value of that outcome, which is there. So that, I hope you've got some intuition for why that is equal to that. I can't really give you more intuition for that without going into horrible analytic rigor. Okay, uh, so um, let's, let's now... Um, calculate what this is, which we can't actually do, but we'll get around that. We can't calculate what this is. And the reason is that um, this um, we don't know what this joint probability density function is. Now, we're, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to factor in a piece of knowledge that we do know. And the piece of knowledge that we haven't used yet, which we do know, is that once you have picked your first value, once the first value is set, i.e. if we condition on the first value or if we condition on the random variable x, then the probability that you're in a certain point within that interval 0 to your first value is uniformly distributed. That's what we haven't used yet, and we will use that. 
Okay, so I'll cut this one there, uh, and we'll, I'll see you in the next video.